only if you treat other people this way and then you can be as mad as you want because you know what? I don't like you. Hey everybody, it's me again, Morgan, from the very unofficial travel guides. It's time for another Sunday sofa time. This week it's gonna be a story time and I'm gonna tell you the famous story about the cone lady. Yes, thanks everybody for coming back here to hear another story or a discussion about something travel related, either that I'm planning or would like to plan or would just like to discuss or something that's happened to me already. In last week's video, I talked about how I think that anybody who enjoys cruising, uh, that there are a lot of things that they would probably like about visiting Disney World. And at the end of this video, I will answer some of your comments uh, live here in front of the camera. And uh, this week I wanted to tell you the story about the Cone Lady. If you've been watching my videos for a while, then you will have seen a video of mine called The Epic Rant. About four years ago, four or five years ago, Marcus and I did our first and only transatlantic cruise on the Norwegian Epic, and it was 13 days long, I think, 12, I think it was 12 nights or 13 nights. It was long. It was the longest cruise. No, it wasn't the longest cruise we've been on. Longest cruise we've been on was two weeks on the Mariner of the Seas in the Mediterranean where we went to Jerusalem. All right, so it was still a very long cruise and the thing that makes transatlantic cruises seem even longer is that like you have so many sea days. Uh, I think we had eight, I think we had eight sea days on this transatlantic cruise. So we boarded the ship in Miami and it left Miami and the next land that we saw was Madeira and that was an island, that's an island off the coast of like Portugal. I uh, was vlogging every day. Every day I made like highlights or talked about what I did that day and on I think probably the sixth or seventh day I realized I was getting kind of I don't know, kind of like cabin fever. I was getting, I was feeling really annoyed with certain things. And when you're on a, a cruise ship, I don't know, you guys, do you know what I mean when I say, even though there's like 4,000 other people on the ship, you still seem to somehow keep running into the, the same people? And there was this woman on uh, the Epic who really uh, annoyed me or she really, ticked me off. And uh, in my video, Epic Rant, I uh, sat down, I set the camera up in the cabin, and I talked about some of these things that I just realized after five or six days of being uh, only on the ship with no land in sight and not, uh, you know, not being able to go off of the ship. Uh, I talked about things that I just realized were starting to really annoy me about other people. So some of the other things that I talked about before I get to the cone lady were just like, Noticing people not washing their hands, you know, that's just gross or people coughing <coughs> into their hand uh, You know doesn't don't people know now that you cough <coughs> Into your elbow or like in the back of your arm or something because you don't touch other people with that part So if you cough into your hand, you're touching other people. You're touching door handles. You're touching the the spoons in the buffet That's why uh, You should cough here and you know what now that I'm now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm not sure if I talked about the coughing thing in that video, but let me just say it is also something that annoys me. Another thing I talked about in that video, I know this for sure, is people being rude to the staff. So that's also something. And that led to talking about this woman. So let me set up the whole premise. And the reason I decided to talk about this is because in, uh, I've been referencing her a lot on Instagram and on Facebook and in other videos and in comments and things. And recently, quite a few people have been asking, what is with cones? Why are you always mentioning cone? What, what's going on? So this is the explanation about that. All right, I was in the buffet uh, on the Epic, which I think is called the Garden Cafe, right? Or my, yeah, it's the Garden Cafe on NCL and on Royal Caribbean, it's the Windjammer. All right, in the Garden Cafe, and one thing that I really like about the Garden Cafe is they have um, like real ice cream, not soft serve ice cream, like the real kind of ice cream where somebody like scoops it out and either puts it in a bowl for you or a cone. And I was waiting to get served and there was a woman in front of me and before I describe her, let me say, I, I really don't mean to criticize 
anything about her age, her appearance, or her choices, the only thing I really mean to criticize is the way she treated the person working behind the ice cream counter, all right? So, if you have any similarities to this woman, please don't think that I'm criticizing you uh, or judging you. Only if you treat other people this way and then you can be as mad as you want because you know what? I don't like you. All right, this woman was kind of hard to say how old she was. She was probably between, I would say between 40 and 60. She was somewhere in there, but she had had some work done. Let's, let's say it uh, nicely that way. She had a, quite a bit of work done and uh, she was wearing big sunglasses and she had very, very big pumped up lips, like bigger than Trisha Paytas lips. And I think a lot of people would say for her age, she probably should have been dressed more conservatively, to put it nicely. And she was trying to order some ice cream. And the way it was set up was, there are cones, like, like, like here's the counter, right? And then there's a stand of cones, and if you want the ice cream in a cone, then you take a cone yourself, you give it to the person behind the counter, and then you tell them what you want in it. And if you just want it in a bowl, they have the bowls behind the counter and they grab a bowl and then they put the scoops in however you like. And then you can put your own chocolate sauce or strawberry sauce or sprinkles or whipped cream or whatever. It's so fantastic. And in case you didn't know, you can go there and get as much as you want, like almost 24 hours a day and it doesn't cost you anything extra. <gasps> One of the reasons I love cruising. Like I said, she had these really, really big lips. And I think she might have been... I don't know, Cuban or, I don't know, she had some kind of Latin, uh, Latin accent. She was speaking English with the guy working at the ice cream counter who was from some other country where they also don't speak English natively. I think he was from Hungary, perhaps. And so two people whose probably English is not their first language are trying to communicate with each other. But this woman was hard to understand, not only because she had a slight accent, but just because her lips were so big. And I feel like her whole face was totally Botoxed. And this is how I remember the conversation going. She was like, Yeah, hi, um, give me chocolate and vanilla. And the guy behind the counter looked at her and said, uh, chocolate? Chocolate and, and what? And she said, Chocolate and vanilla. And he was still like, uh, I'm sorry, chocolate and, 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 and which, 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 just show me. And she pointed to it and she was getting frustrated already. She, I feel like she's probably the kind of woman who's not used to not getting everything that she wants. She kind of gave off that vibe, uh, mostly because of the way she was just treating him. And he, finally understood that she wanted strawberry, so he put this chocolate in and the strawberry in, in the bowl, and went to hand it over the counter, and she like flipped out. And she was like, um, uh, I wanted it in a cone. A cone. C-O-N-E. Why is that so hard to understand? Uh, just because he put it in the bowl, and I just was, I was so upset and I really wanted to say something to her, but I just thought in that moment, I don't know what I could say or how I could say it that wouldn't be really nasty, so I better just not say anything at all. However, a woman standing next to me said something uh, and she tried to be really nice and she was like, Miss, if you want a cone, you need to give it to him. Look, they're right next to you. And then she tried to grab the cone. She couldn't figure out how to get an ice cream cone out of this, you know, it was like, you know, like a tube and you put the cones in the top and then they come out of the bottom. And she was like trying to reach up into the top to grab one. And the guy behind the counter and the woman and me were just staring at her like, are you serious? So yeah, obviously probably not used to having to really do anything for herself. So she gave him the cone, he put the ice cream in the cone and she disappeared and I don't know. That is the cone story. That's how I remember her looking. That's what I remember happening. happening, And uh, that's what I'm referencing all the time. It's her saying, in a cone, I want it in a cone. C-O-N-E. And that's the story. And I feel like there is probably a cone lady on just about every cruise I've been on. 
not necessarily who uh, I've seen in that situation, but who, let's say, fits the general description and is not, I don't know, I would just say not nice to the people around her, especially the service personnel. And that's one thing that just really annoys me is when people on ships or in theme parks or in restaurants or anywhere, if you're not nice to the service personnel, uh, and person personnel. And usually it's those people who then complain about getting bad service. But I think, well, yeah, if you're nasty to them, why would they be nice to you? Why? Nobody wants to be nice to somebody who's being nasty or, you know, barking orders or just being rude. Why? That's like a no-brainer. But I guess, you know, that's kind of the point. You have to have a brain to understand that. And now comes the time of the video where I look at the comments from last week's Sunday story time and talk about some of them right here. So, no, pressed on the wrong video. Like I said, last week we talked about uh, what cruise fans will like about Disney World, and let's go through the comments here. Jamie Terstege, Jamie Terstege, Stege, I don't know how to pronounce it, says, Hey Morgan, and then I'm going to skip a little bit, and says, uh, uh, the, well, she was at Disney World, has been there. Okay, I'll just read the whole thing. <laughs> My family and I love going to Walt Disney World and have gone many times in the past 10 years. It is somewhere where you can enjoy warm weather, usually, and I agree with you, after a 22-hour drive and quite cheap when it comes to lodgings. Jamie, where are you driving there from? One time my parents came down with us, so my husband and I were able to enjoy a full day at Epcot for a date. That sounds great. Uh, a very different visit compared to when we bring the kids. Zoom through each country, getting a passport sign and riding a ride if there is one. Two years ago, we discovered cruising and are absolutely hooked. I knew it. I think the relaxing pace of a cruise, being able to see new things and not worrying about how we are going to get there is very appealing. We are planning one last Disney trip with our kids who will, be, who will soon be too old and too cool happens to everyone, to hang out with their parents in 2020. Got to see all the new Star Wars areas. Yes, that's going to be great. Overall, I think both are very good vacations and can be as busy or laid back as you want to make them. See you next Sunday. Well, it's nice to see you again, Jamie, and here you are too. Yeah, you know, I agree with everything you're saying, that, um, that uh, you can make a Disney uh, vacation relaxing or really exciting. You can make a cruise vacation relaxing or very exciting. It all depends on on how you set it up and what it is you want to do, I think. And uh, if you watch the video from last week, you'll see a lot more of the other similarities that I was talking about. And there's another thing I wanted to mention. I bet I can't find the comment here. All right, here it is. I did find it. It's Tanya Van Stone, and I think I might have talked about a Tanya comment in another video as well. So, hey, Tanya, you got lucky. But I, I appreciate what you said here. Tanya says, I think the only real difference is activity level. You can do nothing on a cruise and it still be a great vacation and worth the money spent. Not doing anything as a, at a Disney park is going to cost you a lot of money for very little in return. And that is one point uh, I just have to admit. It's very true. You can have a really relaxing sea day just hanging out on your balcony uh, at uh, on, on a cruise ship and really feel like you're getting what you want and not really wasting anything. Uh, whereas Tanya was saying, if you spend, you know, like $120 to go to the Magic Kingdom and you just sit on a bench all day, then you are kind of missing out. <laughs> so that's a good point. All right, one more comment here. Um, yeah, and this is an easy one. It's Mr. MPA31 says, not interested in Disney World. Well, good. Then don't go and it'll be one person less crowded for all the rest of us. Yeah, anyways, uh, that's it for today. I thank you so much for coming over. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And there's all sorts of discussions happening. And um, what else? Every Friday, I do Food and Drink Friday on my social media. So if you're also somebody who's interested in restaurants and foods, when food when you're traveling, then check out those things as well. Special thanks to all the people who support me on Patreon, especially the VIPs whose names are over here at patreon.com slash very unofficial. And uh, I haven't done a secret word in a while, but Patreons, if you've watched to the end or anybody else, go over to patreon.com slash very unofficial and log into your account because I'm going to show you how I transformed into the cone lady. Bye-bye.